The ruling party of the All Progressives Congress, APC, led by President Muhammad Buhari from inception, made it clear through its various statements that there will be no room for corruption and corrupt people in Nigeria. In fact, the government began a massive investigation into so many frauds within its sphere in all sectors of the economy. Suspects have been arrested and questioned, while some have had to appear in court. But so far since the corruption battle began, the court is yet to find anyone guilty. Money starched in and outside the country have been recovered with faces and names to the crime. But investigations continue unending. The government insists it is doing all to bring culprits to book while the monies have been seized or accounts frozen. One major event that may have jolted the nation to reasoning is the case of the former chairman of the Presidential Task Force on Pension Reform, Abdul Rashid Mena, who was declared wanted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, on allegations of quoting billions in public funds for his own use. When he added the Pension Reform Task Force, may now report to the workforce on Monday, the 22nd of October. The Pension Fund scandal broke out during the last administration of Jonathan, and the government took disciplinary steps against Mena by dismissing him from service. Mena was an assistant director at the time of his dismissal. Reports indicate that Abdul Rashid Mena had sneaked out of the country to avoid being arrested as directed by the Senate after he was summoned to appear before the Harlot Chamber for questioning. Obviously, there's a system of, uh, there's a culture of malfeasance nurtured by a system of corruption in the country. And uh, unfortunately, you know, what is going on uh, uh, is something people that did not expect. I mean, at this level of and uh, this time of governance, uh, the reality is that government is multi-leveled and multi-layered. You cannot steal one cup of from government, one million, not talk of billions of naira, without going through all the processes and all, and uh, without going through the layers of governance. You have to go through the offices, the departments, the parastatals, and all of that. So what that tells you clearly is that Mayna, if he did steal all of this money, did not steal it alone. You know, there is a network of people that have collaborated and cooperated together to bring about this situation. And I think one, one of the things that is also remarkable about what is going on is that this particular issue has traversed two governments. The government of Jonathan, uh, good luck, when, when it happened, where it happened, and then the present government where it is being covered up or is being seen to be covered up, you know, by some people. Uh, they, they, obviously, there are so many things we do not know about what is going on. But one thing I can say, I think, with a lot of confidence, is the fact that Mena is not alone and that there are so many other people that are involved, powerful people in this country that are involved in this particular you know, uh, thing that is going on. And it is exceedingly unfortunate. Nigerians deserve much more. Nigerians have suffered for so long. I want to begin because there was so much hope and expectation about the desire to fight corruption by Nigerians. The fact that Nigerians trooped out the way they did in that election, we must not forget that it was driven by a passion, a passion to want to do things the right way because they were tired of the old order. Now they are beginning to look at the new order and, you know, looking at it, they are not seeing any difference really now between the new and the old. And so it, 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 it imposes an additional burden of responsibility and duty on the president of this country and this administration to begin to retrace his step, find out where they have gone wrong, so that they can begin the process of redeeming themselves once more. But at this particular point in time, the image of the government has been severely battered. And a lot of people are beginning, you know, there's this catchphrase now you hear from people, one week, one scandal. And, and this is what we have been seeing for quite some time. The government cannot afford that, you know, for this to continue along this line. It is not good for the administration, neither is it good for the people of this country. Nigerians deserve so much. There is no way you see these things happening on a daily basis. You know, in a government that was ostensibly seen as having a completely diametrical approach to, to, to the issue of corruption in this country, opposing, you know, a, a, a approach to the issue of corruption. People expected much more. And just like, I mean, has been said by people, we see these movements, we see these, you know, motions and so on, but it does not, you know, eventually, ultimately, it does not 
uh, end up in the actual conviction of people who have looted the commonwealth of this country. And for as long as it does not happen, for as long as we do not see very powerful people who have compromised the system and undermined the interest of this country, for as long as we do not see them getting lengthy jail terms, and I'm not talking about treating them with kids' gloves, 10, 15, 20 years imprisonment for the crimes that they have committed, which ordinary Nigerians you know, have been subjected to for stealing goods and, uh, and just very small things. If we do not see that happen, Nigerians will continue to take this battle against corruption with a pinch of salt. They are not going to be convinced anymore. And like I said, the government is losing its pl the plot seriously. And the only way they can, you know, reinvent themselves, because I think that is where they are now, to try to reinvent themselves, to bring vigor once more, you know, to the fight against corruption, is for us to actually begin to see them, you know, uh, take hold of these people, prosecute them successfully, and send them to lengthy jail terms, you know, to prison. If that does not happen, Nigerians, we, we, when you talk about the issue of corruption, they will just smile and just realize that it is same of the same. And, and, and that is the pathetic thing about what is going on, yeah. The drama of the return, reinstatement, and sack of MENA catches the attention of the National Assembly. Mr. President, I come under Order 43 by the indulgence of the Senate and the leave of the President of the Senate. A senator may make a personal explanation, although there be no question before the Senate, but no controversial matter may be brought forward, no debate arise upon the explanation. The terms of the exposed proposed statement shall be submitted in details to the President of the Senate when he is leave to make it his thought. Uh, Mr. President, my distinguished colleague, uh, right from the day before yesterday, uh, when you are going reading the newspaper, social media, you will see that a wanted person, somebody who has been declared wanted by EFCC, who left the country for so many years, miraculously came back. Not even came back to the country. So distinguish, distinguish, uh, so this, uh, maybe it's better you come under, uh, because I think this matter is too uh, important. Because of that person's explanation, your colleagues, your colleagues will not be able to contribute. So I think you better just come under uh, 42 and uh, 52, and we can actually get contributions from other members. In the Senate, lawmakers accuse some senior government officials in the Buhari government as complicit in the matter. An investigative report from the Aloysius Etuk Committee in the 7th Assembly had accused the former chairman of the Presidential Task Force and Pension Fund, Mr. Mena, of embezzling pension funds. The anti-graft agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, had subsequently declared him wanted and he has been at large. We have had from both sides, we have heard that Minor had come back. We have heard that Minor, the uh, accused, had come back and had been elevated. We have also heard that Mr. President has set up a committee to look into this matter and report back as quickly as possible. I believe we should not uh, come to the floor of the Senate and start mentioning names when we are not sure of what is happening. Now, the investigation that Mr. President has put up would show those who are culpable on this matter. And until then, I think it is better for us to believe that something wrong has been done, say it here in the Senate, and ensure that we follow up what Mr. President has done. To commend the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for taking a prompt action on this matter and to urge him to get to the root of the matter by exposing all those uh, people behind uh, this action. Taking prompt action and urge him to get to the root of the matter by exposing all those involved. Those in favor of this action, say aye. aye. Those again say nay. This additional prayer that another committee should be set up, uh, comprising of the vice chairman and chairman of establishment, intent, 
Interior, Judiciary, and Anti-Corruption. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution that the Attorney General of the Federation and the Head of Service be summoned to face the Senate at plenary was turned down. However, an ad hoc committee has been set up to investigate the matter. A joint committee of internal affairs should be there, interior should be there, and anti-corruption. Because interior, how he came into the country, and the corruption, the impunity involved in this matter, as well as the establishment, is, is posting. So the joint committee of interior, establishment, judiciary, and anti-corruption. We commend the president for taking very prompt action, full stop. We leave out the other part because we have already consulted a committee to investigate. I so move. Distinguished colleagues, the prayer, the prayer has now been amended. And it reads as follows. Commend the president for taking very prompt action. Full stop. Those in favor of this amended prayer as amended now, say aye. aye. Those against, say nay. Aye. The eyes have it. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, let me... Let me, let me thank all those who have, um, who have contributed to this to these very important discussion. Honest, honestly, distinguished colleagues, we are, we are all very disturbed, and I would like the committee to work very hard to bring the result back to us on the investigation. On, on this matter that really bothers on the security, our fight against corruption, and uh, how we manage our, our public service. Uh, Leader of the Senate.